Hey, Professor Carefit coming from the Bio Bunker. This is the video on human impacts on the environment. Uh, as you know, we are one of the uh, major forces impacting the planet at this time. Okay, so one thing that you've heard of, I'm sure by now, is our effect on climate. Um, here we have from 1960 to 2010, uh, we have CO2 emissions. Uh, from humans, so the concentration in the atmosphere, as well as time, uh, temperature. You can see here, there's a very tight correlation between the two. Now, now we have variations, of course, in temperature. Uh, climate has more than one variable that will affect it. But as CO2 concentrations are increasing, temperature is coming along for the ride. So is that? Well, CO2 is, going, is uh, uh, reflecting light back down to the earth or heat energy back down to the earth preventing it from escaping so it's like a blanket around the planet now here uh is some interesting uh data and you can check out a podcast i have a link to it at the bottom here where you can hear this in greater detail but this is just the real basics the the nail in the coffin that climate change is human cause don't ever uh, take any crap from anyone who thinks it's not human cause because it most definitely is so uh the excess co2 in the atmosphere is carbon 12 when we measure the buildup the up the ongoing buildup of co2 it is carbon 12 only okay the only other sources of carbon 12 other than human burning uh, of fossil fuels are volcanoes okay volcanoes are the only other source of pure carbon 12 um, and when we measure all the outputs of all the volcanoes on earth they account for less than or right around 1% of atmospheric CO2, one tiny percent, nowhere near the amount of increase we're seeing on the planet. On the other side of the scale, 29 billion tons of CO2 are emitted by humans every year. 29 billion tons. So if you were able to weigh it, that's how much it would be. The ocean absorbs about 6 billion, okay? So 29 billion, the ocean takes out about 6. The plants and algae on the earth suck, uh, suck up about 11 billion tons. The rest of it, that the rest of it that's left over, so 6 plus 11, that's about 17 billion tons, is absorbed by the earth. The rest builds up year after year after year after year. And spectrometer data, you've used spectrometers in Bio 1, confirms uh, we can see which wavelengths of light are being absorbed in the atmosphere and the wavelengths that are being more absorbed and causing warming are the wavelengths absorbed by you guessed it carbon dioxide so um, if co2 emissions uh, were carbon 12 and carbon 14 that would mean that it might be wildfires or something adding uh, just because when you burn wood it remo it releases carbon 12 and 14 but when you burn coal or oil, it releases carbon-12 only. And hence, that is why we can tell uh, in a very simple one slide, nail in the coffin, it's absolutely human-caused. Other things we're doing. We're spreading fertilizers all over our fields to grow food, to keep the human population growth curve up, right? And while that does allow us to grow more food on smaller portions of land, a lot of that fertilizer runs off into the ocean. This is the uh, dead zone off the uh, coast here, off the uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, where the Mississippi dumps into the Gulf. All that fertilizer ends up in the Mississippi River, at least the fertilizer from areas like here, right? And it goes into the Gulf, adding tons of nitrogen. That makes algae grow like crazy. And then that algae dies eventually, and it rots. And that depletes the water of oxygen. And that creates then a dead zone where nothing can survive. So we have these big dead zones in these, in these areas where plankton blooms, phytoplankton blooms and dies, depriving the ocean of oxygen, causing massive fish death and other organisms to die. <coughs> so you can see those, those areas here on this map. And that's because of nitrogen pollution from fertilizer use. Um, fertilizer use back where I grew up on a big lake back home. Here are some pictures from the lake where I grew up. Fertilizer use is causing um, blue-green algae. To, to, which are cyanobacteria, to grow, and they produce toxins, and they kill fish, as you can see here. So um, humans are having lots of impacts in lots of ways. I'm not going to cover all of them. Uh, but what I do want to point out 
uh, before I move on is that diversity in a population and, and maintaining a healthy environment is vitally important uh, for um, ecosystem health. We have diversity in organisms, we have diversity in communities, and we have diversities in the ecosystem. And everything relies on one another in those food webs. So we can't just say, oh, who cares about fish, right? That's, that's not going to work if we as humans want to stay alive. Um, I want to show you some major things that have changed here in the United States, and especially in Arkansas, in the last, oh, 200 years or so. So on the upper left corner here, we see the United States in uh, 1620, and the black there is areas of virgin forest, meaning forests that had never been cut down. And then you can see 1920, uh, and then today, there's barely anything except in like hard-to-reach mountain peaks and things. There's barely any virgin timber left today. So almost all forests you see today have been cut down at least once and have grown back, so you don't get those big trees that we used to have. You can see... Down here, there's a person right there. This is a picture. I think this might have been taken in Arkansas. I can't remember anymore. But there's a, a picture of a guy in a woods back in, in the day when they had mostly virgin timber. Very big old tree. Things that have happened in the 1800s and then into... Uh, oh, I got a lot of... Uh, I got a big old blur here. I don't know why. That's kind of cool. I'm in the witness protection program. Let me uh, shut this curtain. Nope. <laughs> oh well. What the heck is going on here? All right, we're going to pause the recording. Okay, I think I fixed it. Okay, so we have uh, in the last, since the 20th century and the 1800s into the 20th century, we had the loss of many large animals. Uh, large mammals in the United States, Arkansas in particular, we're focusing on today. The declines and extinctions of birds, massive clearings of forests here in, in the United States. For example, uh, we know about uh, the Great Plains bison, but there was a species of bison here in Arkansas, uh, the woodland bison. Uh, here is the original extent of the bison's range, just bison in general. You can see they were all throughout Arkansas in the 1500s, uh, but by... Uh, the uh, 1800s, they were far less limited range, and, and by the late 1800s, they were only in the blue areas there. You can see we wiped them out in massive numbers. Here's a pile of bison skulls. Uh, so we had a woodland species of bison. It's extinct now. It was a little smaller than the Great Plains bison. But what happened is we cleared a lot of farm, uh, a lot of prairie, made it into farmland, and then we killed a lot of the bison, both to make uh, room for farms and to uh, unfortunately wage war uh, with the Native Americans. We used to also have lots of elk in Arkansas. The species of elk that we had is now extinct. Um, it was called the Eastern Elk. It was extirpated from Arkansas by 1840. Extirpated is a word that means it's no longer here anymore. Here, say hi to everybody. Get it out of the way. Hi. Mwah. Blah. Okay, so extirpated means they're no longer here anymore. Extinct means they're dead, right? Uh, by 1877, they were extinct. Uh, in 1933, Arkansas tried to reintroduce elk. It didn't work. But then later on in the 80s, we tried again, and now we do have a small elk population. Once again, not the same species we used to have, but we do have a small elk population here in Arkansas now. Last video is going to hell. Okay, um... Also, here in Arkansas, we had a lot of really cool birds that are now extinct. Um, they uh, were hunted commercially, not by, like, Grandpa going out with a shotgun, but by factory hunting. Um, they were hunted for, their, for food, for uh, restaurants, and they were hunted for their feathers, um, for hats. The ladies' hats back in the day, they used to put feathers in them. Um, they were also... Um, a lot of them probably are now extinct also due to habitat loss as we converted forests into farms. Um, and another thing, once there were farms, diseases would spread from farm animals to those organisms. Here is one of the most amazing species to ever exist, uh, the passenger pigeon. It's now extinct as of 1914. But look at the numbers here. In 1800, there were 4 billion of them in the United States and Canada and probably northern Mexico. Four billion. 
By 1900, there were less than 100 left. By 1914, the last one named Martha died in the Cincinnati Zoo. This was the most abundant land vertebrate on Earth. But here's an image from an Arkansas newspaper. They put up traps that would catch them by the thousands. They would catch them, kill them, put them on refrigerated trucks, and send them to big cities where they were eaten in restaurants. They would also eat their babies out of the nest. They would catch their eggs, and for whatever reason, the babies were a delicacy. And uh, we wiped them out in less than 100 years. Here's a, a quote. John James Audubon. While on a trip to St. Louis during the entire three-day travel, he observed a continuous flock of pigeons overhead with no beginning and no end. The flock flew overhead unbroken for three days. Audubon said their droppings fell like snowflakes. He tried to count them, but after a brief while, he realized they were too numerous to count. In less than 100 years, there were no more. So these would literally block out the sun when they would fly over. They were a living storm. There are some amazing videos online of simulations of what their flocks would have been like. Check those out. But this We can have massive, awful consequences on this planet if we do not watch what we're doing. Never believe that, you, that we can't affect the planet negatively. We've done it, and we're doing it. All right, Carolina parakeet. This is one of my favorite species I would love to have seen. You can see its native range there. Uh, it was right here in Arkansas, extinct as of 1918. This was a real parakeet that you could teach to talk, and they lived in big flocks. And, and uh, unfortunately, they liked to eat some farmer's crops, and they were all shot for ladies hats and things and and when you would shoot one and it fell on the ground they wouldn't fly away they would fly down to look at what was wrong with their friend and then you could shoot a bunch of them at once so here's their original range there's a stuffed one right there but there's one of the reasons they're extinct ladies hats i don't know why but that's the way it is Another extinct bird species, this one extinct mostly due to habitat loss, the ivory-billed woodpecker. There were some people who thought they were still alive a few years ago, but probably not. Uh, the evidence is not strong. Extinct as of 1944. Now, we do have a living species here today called the pileated woodpecker that looks very similar. You can see it at the top there. You can see it perched and in flight. The ivory bill down below has a white bill. It has those black bars on its wings in flight, and it has white patches on its wings visible when it's perched. And so uh, if you do see one of these, now if you, if you see it in Conway, it's there's no way it's an ivory bill. But ivory bills live near the Mississippi River in thick wooded areas. Um, the, here are, here's some of the evidence that someone claimed to have had, have had uh, a few years ago, and they thought it was an ivory bill. But... To me, those pictures aren't any clearer than uh, all the evidence for Sasquatch, right? Not, not very good evidence at all. But if you do find one, if, if we're wrong and there really is a living one, uh, they were thought to have been spotted in the big woods area here. If you can find one, not a dead one, you can't shoot it. But if you can lead scientists to where they are, there's a $50,000 reward in it for you. So, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, have some land down there and a canoe and you know where to go, 50 grand if you can show science that they still exist. Here is where they all are now, in the drawers of museums, extinct because of uh, our carelessness. So, this is the end of the material for the final. I know it's kind of a downer note, but we've learned from this and we can change so we don't do it again. But it takes every one of us to tell our politicians what we what we think. It takes us making choices in our everyday habits and changing our ways of life to fit reality. We have to use reason and ignore what we hope is true and pay attention to what we know is true. And so we need to, uh, we need to, uh, to keep that in mind as we make decisions going forward. So the final exam is coming up soon. Um, the material since the last test will be new on the final and the rest of the final will be a review and it will be a little more review than new material because we only had about two weeks worth of new material um but it'll be entirely multiple choice at least if you're watching this video uh during the pandemic of 2020 uh when i'm making it all right so um i will let you know more about the final as we go uh but this concludes my planned lecture recording content 
for uh, spring 2020, Bio 1441. I'll see you when we're back in class in person.